All right, welcome back to Halftime. The Investment Committee is answering your questions. First up, Steph, Chris is in Kansas City. He wants to know, Hewler Packard Enterprises has blown past his quarter estimate with very positive reports. It continues to meet or exceed its estimates for the last several quarters. Is it time to invest in HPE as a long-term investment? I like it very much and have been buying recently on the, any pullbacks we get. This is an enterprise IT spend recovery story. We have heard about this theme from Dell, from Cisco, from HPQ. We heard it from HPE. That's one of the reasons why I like it. But I also like the transition to cloud. They're doing a great job in terms of cost cuts and free cash flow. The CAGR is about 15 to 20 percent over the next three years. And they're buying back stock and they're actually their dividend actually at 3.1 percent. I think very attractive for a stock trading at eight times earnings. So, yes, I like the story and I think you can buy it. Yeah, just really quick, I actually spoke to the CEO of HPE last quarter, and he says the street needs to reconsider how they're looking at this company as they make that transition to a network yeah. as a service company because those uh, revenues are high margin and they're very durable, so just something to think about. All right, Joe, you're next up. Yeah. Vic in Long Beach, California writes, Hi, Joe, I'm in Joe T. What are your top picks these days? Well, well, first of all, thank you for the confidence and the strategy that has you invested there. Uh, it's an equal-weighted strategy, so the affection that – uh, I might hold towards the holdings. It's, it's, it's universal. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll highlight some of the names that we might not talk about frequently on the show. Back in January, we added Arista Networks, communication equipment, ticker symbol A-N-E-T. In July, we added Arete, PSA is the ticker symbol, public storage. And then more recently, at the end of October, we added Estee Lauder, ticker symbol E-L. So I'd like to sometimes highlight some of the names that we don't talk about freely, uh, frequently, and these would be three of uh, those types. All right, next over to you, Surat. Michael in California is asking, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of having international stocks in a portfolio? I'm looking into starting a position into Diageo. So I think international stocks uh, have a really good place in a diversified portfolio. You get exposure to different countries, and you get the company itself to allocate the capital where they want to be. Uh, we like Diageo. It's core holding for us. I think Diageo is a great, uh, great way to play reopening. They've done very well at stay at home, but as soon as more restaurants and bars open, and Diageo, their whole suite of products are very high end. If you think about Johnny Walker and you think about this, you know their their vodkas, and they are so diversified across the world. It's a great place to kind of start have a starter position. Stock's fairly valued, so I'd add more to it on a pullback, but it's definitely a core holding for the future. Yeah, big uh, uh, business in tequila as well with Casamigos. Also, lastly, Pete, Frank in exactly. Portland, my cousin Frank, he wants to know, does Pete still recommend Target after its recent decline? I do, but, um, you know, it is, it is interesting to see this stock. It was just trading 260, now we're underneath 220. So, um, obviously, the selling pressure has come in. I still look at all the fundamental side of the story and the news and everything else. I still think Target's a great buy. As a matter of fact, I'm reevaluating if I want to uh, take a look and see if I want to actually start adding some more at the, again at these levels. I haven't done it yet. I'll make sure to let Patty and everybody know when I do, and we'll talk about it on air. All right.